Good morning. We welcome you to Faith United Methodist Church. We are glad that you are worshiping with us today. Whether you're watching from our YouTube channel or live on Facebook, or even live on our website, www.faithsouthbay.org. And if you haven't clicked on the thumb to like this Facebook page, or click on the subscribe button on our YouTube channel, we invite you to do so. Please continue to like and share with your family, with your friends, and community. We invite you to be part of our community. Let's stay connected. So as you come into this place, into this holy space, as we prepare our hearts and our minds to worship God, please join in these centering words. For all who lose sight of hope, adjust our perspective, catch our eye, and touch us, risen Savior with your surprising presence. Join us and let us sing together for the opening hymn.
Good morning. I'm Donna Iwatsudu Iki, today's liturgist. Please join me in the call to worship. I will be reading the lines marked L. Please respond by reading the lines marked P. Fill us with the power of your resurrection. We are the Easter, Easter people, filled, filled with your love. Transform us into Christ likeness. We are your image bearers, filled with your peace. Direct our steps, words, and mission. We are your adopted children, filled with your spirit. Let us bow our heads. Holy God, we give thanks that you often reveal yourself to be different from our expectations. Surprise us here in this place. Wrap us in your spirit and light as our lives are transformed into true image bearers of your Son. Meet us here with the resurrection power found in you. In Christ's holy name, amen. Good morning. This is Pastor Key, and I'd like to invite all the children to come and join us at the screen. I know this is still different, but we're going to continue to try to gather together in spirit. And once you do, I want you to go ahead and spread out your arms wide open. Don't hit mom and dad on the sides, okay? And just repeat after me. God is a great big God. God is a great big God. God loves us with a great big love. And we're all part of God's great big world. All right. Thank you for the enthusiasm, folks. Uh, <clears throat> but as we gather, one thing I did want to say is that we are having this, this message that comes out of 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. And I have brought some, uh, I brought a couple things. For those of you who follow baseball, I know. You know, a lot of baseball players have been wearing the jersey number 42 after Jackie Robinson. Well, I'm not, uh, I, I, haven't, I, have, I don't have a Jackie Robinson jersey, but I do have one of my favorite baseball people, and his name is Roberto Clemente, and he's kind of like Jackie Robinson, except he represented and opened the door for a lot of uh, Latino American base, baseball players, baseball players from all over Latin America, and he was really a trailblazer in that way. And so, and I bring this because when you see this, this is a baseball jersey, and when you see people wearing this in professional uh, sports, you're going to know that they play baseball, that they have a bat in their hands, and, they're gonna, and the way to score is to go in and, and get on base and try to run and, and, and get to home base so that you can score points. Well, let me ask you a question. How many of you recognize what kind of jersey this is? Anyone? Okay, this is a football jersey, <laughs> Reverend Allison, not volleyball. <laughs> but no, this is a football jersey, and of course, this is one of my favorite teams. In fact, this is, this is the my favorite team, but, um, but this is the Pittsburgh Steelers, and when they wear this, they play football. And the reason why I bring up these jerseys is because, you know, when you walk around, you know, town or you know, around our city, and then all of a sudden you see a police officer in their uniform, and you know what they're supposed to do? They're supposed to protect and save, you know, and serve. When you see, like, you know, a, a, a firefighter's uniform, what do they do? They help us uh, in, in, in times of fire and in times of tragedies and times of, in times of just, you know, natural disasters or whatever it may be firefighters are there. When you go to the hospital and you see a nurse in their, in their nurse's uniform, you know that they're there to care for us. Well, you know what? As Christians, what do we wear? And that's a good question. We don't necessarily wear anything on the outside, except maybe if you're a priest or a pastor or a clergy person, we might have a robe or some kind of clergy outfit. But as Christians, you know how people recognize us as Christians? Well, according to today's passage, it says that People recognize us as Christians, as disciples of Christ, by the way we love one another. You know, God calls us his creation, his children. And the only way that we can be identified as God's children is if we do what God calls us to do. And that is to love those around us the best way we can. So today, at home, if you can, especially if you have a brother and sister, please do something loving for them today and tomorrow, okay? And yes, parents, you're welcome, all right? Do something for your brother and sister, and if you don't have a brother and sister, then go and give your mom and dad a big hug and do something loving for them. 
do something that you think would really make them happy and filled with joy. Really, because this is how people will recognize that we are followers of Jesus. We are followers of God. And this is the kind of things that we wear, not necessarily physically like clothes, but by our acts. They'll know, wow, that person must be a follower of Christ, a follower of God, a Christian. So like football players or baseball players or, or, or doctors or nurses or police officers or even firefighters, they all have uniforms, but our uniform is what we say and what we do. And I'll tell you right now, when you love someone, that's what people will recognize. Amen? Let us come together in prayer. Dear God, thank you once again for loving us, for clothing us with your love, for showering us with your grace. And I pray, God, that all the love that you pour into us, we will be able to give some of that back, starting with our family, starting with our brother or sister, or our mom or dad or grandparents or aunties or uncles, whoever it is that lives with us. I pray that you would, we would start with those very people Show them the love that you've given us. I pray that all of our children will take the step to just do something loving for someone in their family, in their household. Lord, thank you once again for always loving us. Never stop loving us. And I pray that we continue to be able to just love others the way you love us. In the name of Jesus, we all say, Amen.
This morning's scripture lesson is taken from 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. Listen and hear the word of God with new ears. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him will purify themselves just as he is pure. Everyone who commits in sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins. And in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The word of God for all people. Thanks be to God. Good morning, everyone. So the year is 1996, and this great big new phenomena enters into the world where the world and mostly its children are taken by storm. This phenomena was called Pokemon. Now this new craze hit the world so hard and that everyone had to be a part of it. And I remember the first things that came out were the Game Boy games and the TV show. Now for me, I was a little bit behind. I didn't get, I didn't start watching the TV show immediately and I didn't begin to play the game immediately because I didn't, I didn't own it and so I felt left out. But I was able to use my entire life savings, everything that was in my piggy bank, to scrounge together the $30 to cover the cost of the game. And the thing is, I was consumed by this game. First, I thought I had to catch up to my friends now, if you don't know what Pokemon is, the concept of the game and the show and everything related to Pokemon is that you uh, catch these little creatures, and these creatures are called Pokemon. And it, uh, Pokemon is Japanese for pocket monsters, okay? And you, you train and you battle these little creatures that you've caught in the game, and you, you raise them and they become stronger and stronger. Now, a lot of these Pokemon, they're actually based off of real life animals, their names. For example, there is a pigeon Pokemon named Pidgey. Okay, I know it's not that creative, but um, you, you get the reference and the, the Pokemon itself looks very much like a pigeon. Now, I remember having a mental crisis one day after I'd played so much of this game. I was staring at a real life pigeon, but I, for the life of me, could not remember what this creature was called. I knew that it wasn't called a Pidgey, but because I had played so much Pokemon, my brain couldn't retrieve the word Pigeon, the actual name Pigeon, and so I just kept thinking, I know it's not Pidgey, I know it's not Pidgey, what are you? Now the thing about this game is it has consumed, uh, when it consumed me, now one of the best parts of this game was that your Pokemon evolved, okay? You would train it, it would get stronger, and then it would evolve. Now they would evolve from weaker creatures into bigger and stronger ones. And this is a lot like what we have in real life, which is a caterpillar kind of evolving or uh, going through the process of metamorphosis into a butterfly. Now, seeing your Pokemon evolve was probably one of the most rewarding parts of the game. You raise them and then they finally grow into their full potential. Now, it's not exactly the same as Pokemon, but a similar concept was being lived out in the community that John was writing to in our text for today that although that they had these, this community had evolved, that they had reached this new being in Christ, their lives needed to reflect it though. Now some in this community were failing to reflect their new lives in Christ, this community that the Apostle John himself was leading. Now we cannot blame them because following Christ isn't really that easy. Beginning in the earliest Christian communities, this historic Christian problem has plagued us ever since then. There's this story that, uh, that always resonates and I always think about it a lot is that there's this story about Gandhi and he's on a train and 
or some sort of transportation. And, he, and this, this man, this uh, Western man who's Christian thinks and recognizes Gandhi and thinks to himself, if I convert Gandhi to Christianity, how many more uh, people that, he, that Gandhi influences will be converted to Christianity as well? And so he, he talks to them and tries to he tries to evangelize to Gandhi, and after, after this man is done, Gandhi looks up to him and, and basically says something like this, this quote that has been attributed to Gandhi. And Gandhi says, I like your Christ, but I do not like your Christians because they are so unlike your Christ. Now this same critique of the Christian religion has manifested itself in so many different ways and through so many different voices. Now, as a church and as a religion, we often fail to act as Christ did. How many times have you heard that the, that the idea that Christians are the most self-righteous people that someone has met, or that they're just so judgmental, or that Christians simply pick and choose what Bible verses they want to follow and not follow, and are therefore hypocrites? Or that Christianity has become just generally self-serving, that the whole purpose of having faith is strictly to just benefit the believer. For me, one of the things that strikes me as a, a critique is that most, most of what Christian teaching sometimes boils it down, itself down to is that we get stuck in a Good Friday world. That the teaching is so focused on just the crucifixion and on atonement, that we only pay attention to what Christ has done for us instead of also focusing on what Christ has commissioned us to do afterwards. The thing is, is after Easter, we are a resurrected people, yet in this teaching, we're perpetually living in a Good Friday worldview. All in all, there are so many instances where we do not live as Christ did, where we do not reflect Christ like we were meant to do, where the church hasn't done what it was meant to do. That Gandhi's critique remains true today, that we are so unlike our Christ. But there are so many reasons for this too. Our text for today suggests that this community doesn't really care much about the present relevance of faith because they're only focused on what they will be like when Christ comes again. Now you see, the, the early church, they believed that Jesus would come back within their lifetime. And so they simply thought that when Christ did come again, they would be glorified. This is like the idea that if we're going to lose our baby teeth, why should we even brush them? Now, of course, this wasn't the case, but this idea isn't new to us today. I've heard many people ask the question of why they should follow God now instead of just living a life of sin until they got closer to the end of their lives. But what this says is that the resurrection has nothing to do with me right here, right now, in this very moment, in my present life, in this present time, and is only relevant to me when I die. Now, even when the early church thought that Jesus' coming was literally around the corner, any time, any moment, any second, the Apostle John still told them that they need to worry about the here and now, that as an adopted member of Christ's family, at the evidence of this adoption was in how they conducted themselves. This early group of Christians was not living in a way that reflected that they were children of God. Now, as God's adopted children through Christ, we adopt and inherit God's righteousness and the title of being God's children. In ancient Rome, in the context of where our biblical text is written, adoption was less about taking in orphans like we think of it today, and more about continuing one's name and giving one's inheritance to another. This is the understanding of adoption that we must have when we think about how we belong to God, that we are continuing God's name and that we are being given God's inheritance. And this adoption transforms us we become part of the family and we become ambassadors of God's righteousness in this world. You see, we aren't righteous because of our own doing, but because of what God is doing within us. This is the metamorphosis or the Pokemon evolution or the divine changes, however you want to think about it, that is happening within us. The goal is Christ-likeness, that we look, act, and have the same heart that was in Christ. This is where my sermon title 
comes in. This sermon is titled, Like a Baby Bear. And this is where it comes in. That just like a baby bear is like its mama bear, so too are we like Christ. Just like a baby bear looks like its mama, so we look like Christ. Just like a baby bear learns and follows and trusts in its mama bear, so we do with Christ. Our Christ likeness is just like this. We will never grow to be exactly like Christ, but we're to look, act, trust, and learn from Christ, striving to be as Christ-like as we possibly can. So pay attention to the ways that God is trying to transform you. It's from within, and God leads you to be better, to see things differently, and ultimately to be restored. This is why the concept of us being God's image bearers is such an important Christian concept. And we can go all the way back to the beginning in Genesis. When God created humankind, God placed God's own image upon us. We were marked. We were created to be like God. Then, of course, sin enters into this world, and that image is tarnished. But with Christ's work on Easter Sunday and the Holy Spirit's presence within us, we can untarnish that image through the grace that God has given us. What this means for us is that we look different from the world, but we are not separate from it. We are called back to the world to bring that same transformation that God has done to us into the world. As a church, we are not an oasis away from the world where we come to refresh ourselves, be filled, and then leave that oasis behind. Instead, we are more like jars, or we come to church, or to Bible study, or to small group, or to other spiritually filling events. By doing this, we fill our own jars. We then take those jars out into the world, sharing that with others. God fills us to use us. When people ask the question of where God is in the world, with all the pain and the suffering and all the terrible events that we see daily, I believe that we point to those who are responding to the hurt going on. That is where God is. We need to be changed people that God calls us to be. We need to be the people set apart or marked by God or those with the restored image of God. Whatever, whatever works for you in understanding this, we need to be people that are set apart because God wants us in the world, reflecting that image into the world. There are so many places and people and issues where God can use us. Jesus points out that the harvest is plentiful, but the harvesters are few. Now last week, it felt like things were returning to quote-unquote normal, which means that our old habits were rearing their ugly heads again. There are reports of another black man being killed by police, reports of a police confrontation inside of a high, with a high school or inside of a high school um, who was a shooter, an active shooter, inside of this Tennessee school. On Thursday night, there were reports of a shooting inside of a FedEx building. And there are continued hate crimes against Asians and people that look like Asian. In LA, there is a report that a uh, Mexican woman who was mistaken to be Asian was attacked. There's racial violence, gun violence, continued death from COVID, financial hardship, depression, loneliness, homelessness. All of these things are going to become even more apparent to us as we get back to normal. We're going to go back to seeing the hurt in this world as we begin to venture back out into it. We're going to see it more and more. We're going to once again be faced with the homeless man or woman that's on the corner again. Children and youth are going to go back to school, and once again, there's going to be gun violence. The world's hurt is going to be on full display again. Our time of hibernation and isolation is coming to an end, but it's time for us to go and transform the world. At this time, as we enter into a, a moment of pastoral prayer, we have many prayer requests for our community, but also for this world. 
But some of our community prayer requests are that um, we pray for the for Mitzi Ueda's family as they uh, mourn the loss of Mitzi during this time. We also pray for the uh, Janet Y. Yamada family as they mourn the loss of, of Janet, who uh, just to recently celebrate her 102nd birthday. We also pray for Gary Matsubara, who is the son of Joyce Matsubara, who is recovering from surgery. But we also know that there are many, many issues going on in this world, and so we lift up those as well. For example, we pray for those that have received the Johnson & Johnson vaccine and are uh, worried about the news and hearing about the blood clots going on, and so we pray for that. We also pray for uh, this country as we hold our collective breath surrounding the Derek Chauvin, Chauvin case, who is charged with the murder of George Floyd. We also pray for the uh, Wright family, the family of Dante Wright, who was uh, killed, who was a 20-year-old killed by police at a traffic stop. And so with the many prayer requests that we have that are on our hearts and our minds, I know that there are many prayer requests that you may have, and so I ask that you keep those on the forefront of your mind, keep those on the forefront of your hearts as we enter into this time of prayer. So let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we know that there are so many issues going on in this world, God. There are so many hurts. There are so many people that are just in a place where they are in need of prayer, God. We thank you that we are a people that are able to offer prayer to you, God, and that you are a God who listens to our prayers, Lord. We pray at this time for uh, the members of our community, God. We pray for the Ueda family as they uh, mourn the loss of Mitzi, knowing that her life has touched them in such a way, God, and so that the, the loss hurts so much, God. We pray the same for the Yamada family as they mourn the loss of Janet during this time, knowing that as a family that they have lost um, someone that has been with them for so long, God. We pray for Gary Matsubara as he recovers from surgery, knowing that the recovery from surgery is always hard and tedious, and it is not just simply over overnight, God, and we pray for his body as it recovers during this time. We also pray for the many prayer requests going on in this world, God. So many of the issues and the places of hurt that, have, uh, that need prayer, God. We pray for all of those that have received the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, that they um, are awaiting news of just what, is, what are the possible side effects, God, that there has been a stop, a pause to this vaccine, Lord. So we pray for them. We also pray for this country as we hold our collective breath, wondering what will happen with this Derek Chauvin case, God. We knowing that um, we are so divided and that we are just, uh, many are outraged at what could possibly happen, God. We also pray for the Wright family, his girlfriend, his, his baby, as well as his family as they are shocked by the news that their 20-year-old son or boyfriend or father has passed away unexpectedly, God, due to gun violence. We also pray for the many um, anti-Asian sentiments that are happening, God, also as well as our, uh, just the racial violence going on in this country. We pray for the continued safety of our school-aged children as they return back to physical school, not only from COVID, God, but also the, um, the dangers that come with that, knowing that in-person school means also the fact that uh, shootings are more likely to happen as well. We continue to pray for us as a community as we prepare to come back, as we prepare to go back into this world, that we are being prepared and we are being transformed by your love and your grace, God, so that we are able to be ambassadors in all of these situations in ways that we can take action, God, that we are not just people that seek to be the church only here on Sundays, God, but that we seek to be the church in this world. And so with all these prayers, we pray the prayer that you taught your disciples saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. 
as we respond to God's grace, we're thanking you for your support, your continuous support of our mission and ministries here at Faith and in the world. So we thank you for continuing um, your pledges, your tithes, your offerings, as you bring them to us, as you drop them off to our mailbox, mail them to us um, through Venmo, Venco, uh, and PayPal. We are so thankful and grateful for all the blessings that we have received as a faith community. But we also remember that these gifts belong to God. So I invite you to pray with me at this time. Let us bow our heads. Generous God, you put love into human form in Jesus, who lived, died, and was raised to eternal life. Receive now these offerings that your grace may live today through the work of your church. We offer these gifts with our time, our commitment, and our love that the world may witness without doubt that Christ is alive today. In your holy name we pray, amen. Thank you, Minister Eric, for your message today, as well as to our worship team for putting together our service, Donna Iki for being our liturgist today. And as we come into a time of faith in action, we are reminded that we are the church, that we are the church called to be in action in the world after we hear and are called to do what God asks us to do. And so in doing that, we invite you to check out our website at faithsouthbay.org for details on all the opportunities of mission and ministry that you can participate in throughout the week and throughout our time together, even though we are apart. And so today we wanna to remind you that you are invited at noon to join our fellowship hour, and that is on Zoom. And so you can go to our website and find our Zoom link, which is our regular church link for most of our Bible study classes as well. And we wanted to remind you that we have two new classes this season. In addition to all of our everyday Bible studies, we have on Thursday evenings, beginning on April 22nd to May 27th, six weeks of a literature class, an ethnic studies literature class called Were You There? And so you are invited to check it out. It is at 7 p.m. There is a special registration to get the Zoom link. So you can go to tinyurl.com backslash, and that would be its AES Lit class. And so we want you to join us for our literature class. For those of you who have participated in Apples and Oranges, which is a three-week class on American, Asian Americans, race and power, you are invited to join us for our second and third sessions, which will be next week, Sunday at 1 p.m. and the following week. We changed it from every other week after following next week because it's Mother's Day on May 9th. So we'll have two sessions in a row next week and the following. So join us and that registration site is at tinyurl.com slash like apples oranges. And so we also want to remind you there are some things that are coming up. We are practicing to re-enter into this church and be a community in person again. And so as we are practicing this, we need your help. There's going to be a survey that is put out this week, uh, or in the following weeks for May, and getting us ready. So please uh, be on the lookout for the May good news, but also it will be sent out earlier in our email blasts as well as in social media. And so this survey is going to help us gauge where you feel the most comfortable returning in person at faith. We want to thank our Nichigo Ministries for having our special bento boxes yesterday for anyone who wanted to pick them up. And so we're very grateful for our partnership and being the church together with our Nichigo Ministries. We also, again, want to remind you that our services, because we have been doing them this way for the last year, we've had two services in English and one in Japanese. We're, all, we're going to start figuring out how do we keep the services, but the times and format may start to change, so we will keep you updated on how that is going to happen because we are preparing to go live and then we're preparing to be in person again. So with all of these things that are happening in our community, please stay in touch. If you need anything, give us a call. If you have pastoral care needs, let us know as well. And at this time, I'd like to invite back Minister Eric as he sends us off with a commission and blessing. Let us go forth with these words of benediction. May God who restores us, who renews us, who places God's image upon us, send us forth into this world so that we may show Christ's likeness of the Son. 
go forth with the Holy Spirit, knowing where we can be called into this world to transform it. We pray this in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for worshiping with us at our Faith United Methodist Church worship services. As we shared earlier, there is a special announcement that we would like to make to our congregation and to our beloved community. At this time, I'd like to introduce our staff parish relations chair, Derek Tyra, as he shares a spe special message with us today. Thank you, Reverend Allison. Um, good morning, Faith family. Um, at this time, I have the honor and privilege of sharing the following message from our West District Superintendent, Reverend Mark Nakagawa. Dear Faith United Methodist Church, the scriptures teach us, for everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. In that spirit, I write to inform you of a pastoral change that will take place in the coming months. On July 1st, Reverend Kite Choi will begin a new pastoral appointment at Centenary United Methodist Church. This decision by Bishop Grant Hagia and the cabinet has not been made lightly. However, Reverend Key's gifts of ministry that you have enabled him to develop are needed at this particular appointment at this particular time. For the past 13 years, Reverend Key has served in a variety of capacities among you. He has been central in building up the ministry to children, youth, young adults, and young families, while also being a pastor to the adult members. The ministry's experiences Reverend Key has gained at Faith enabled him to pass his board interviews earlier this year, and he will be ordained at Full Elder at annual conference in June. Truly, you have played a primary role in developing Reverend Key's ministerial gifts in a way you are a gift to the United Methodist Church. We continue to live in the midst of a global pandemic that limits our ability to personally interact with one another. However, between now and the end of June, I know that you will have the opportunities to express your gratitude to Reverend Key and especially to Caroline, Eli, and Drew for their support as a pastoral family. Please show them the love that you have always shown them and trust that it will continue after their time at Faith has concluded. My sincerest appreciation goes to the SPRC committee and Reverend Allison for coordinating this appointment process in a relatively brief time frame. It is a time that marks endings and new beginnings for both the Choi family and the Faith UMC family. Thankfully, we go forward knowing that God guides us all in a new and bright future. Grace and peace, Reverend Mark Nakagawa, West District Superintendent. On behalf of the SPRC team, we want to congratulate Pastor Key on this amazing announcement. You deserve this and you know, and even though we are going to miss you here at Faith, we know that this is all part of God's plans for you and your family. In closing, I want to personally thank you. Thank you for all that you've done for us here at Faith UMC. We would not be where we are today without your leadership and guidance. Thank you, and go Lakers and Dodgers. At this time, I want to call up Pastor Key and Caroline to share a few words. Thank you, Derek, uh, for really that um, really nice, nice worded letter there. Um, I mean, there's something that I, I, I wondered if I should have written something down to, to share with you, but uh, knowing all of you for all these years, uh, you would know that it was written down. Uh, we'd rather just go ahead and uh, share from our hearts. Uh, this is not easy for, for any of us, and I know it's not easy for you as well. Uh, it's never easy to say goodbye, um, and I know even in our family we'd always say, you know, we have to make choices between what's right and what's easy, and we don't know if this is right, but we know this is not easy. And for that reason, we, we know that we're going to have some time to say goodbye, uh, but at the same time, know that this, is, this weighs heavy on our hearts. We got this message this week, and, and 
just uh, something that we're going to have to to walk with and pray about every day. And and again, I, I, I could just sound happy and excited, but you know that's uh, that's not fully you know how I feel, and that's not fully how Caroline feels. But at the same time, we know that this is a great opportunity uh, because this is an opportunity for for us and our family to continue to spread our wings this year, but in a different way. Uh, and starting July 1st, as you heard, we'll start at Centenary. And uh, we do, we'll do our best to represent you for all those who really just did your best to raise us and, and uh, did your best to prepare us for just this very thing. And I know you're just like, no, we didn't prepare you for that. But I believe you have, we believe you have. And, and God has been there with us every step of the way. And so we just wanna say thank you. And we're gonna have some time to dialogue some time to talk story because we need to. Uh, we're going to grieve as much as you, uh, but at the same time, this is something that we did sign up for as a pastoral family of the United Methodist Church. And even though this is, you know, not easy, we know that this is a decision that uh, Bishop Grant Hagia and the cabinet has made, and we signed up for this, believe it or not. Uh, but know that um, because we'll still be, you know, nearby as far as the caucus. Well, I'm so thankful that we at least stay in the Japanese American caucus. And that way, you know, it's, it's really just a continuation of what I've learned here and be able to, to use all those uh, experiences and gifts uh, to serve with those things at our next appointment. So we just want to say thank you. We're going to miss you, uh, but it's not goodbye yet. And, and if anything, uh, we'll continue to be in touch. And just know that we're praying for all of you out there. I know this hasn't been easy for us for, the, for these last uh, pandemic, you know, time, but... Uh, we do know that we are never alone, so we continue to walk through this together. So thank you. Thank you, you know, to Derek Tyra and, and the SPRC. We have a great church. Really, this is a great church. And if there's anything that the church does well is it keeps going. And you have a great senior pastor in Reverend Allison who will continue to serve you and to lead you, to pray for you, and to pastor you. And I have all the confidence that God will use her and whoever else you know, to, to support that here, uh, to keep this ministry going called Faith UMC. We have nothing but faith in that sense. So thank you and thank God. So we just want to say for now, um, just wanted to share with you what we felt right now at this moment. Okay. Um, anything you want to say? No. Well, that's Caroline for you, uh, Miss Introvert. But uh, I know she shares my exact sentiment. So thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Over the last decade plus, I've known Pastor Key. Our friendship has grown into a wonderful collegiality. And so we wanted to let you know at Faith that we are feeling a very bittersweet moment because we are so excited that Pastor Key and his family are able to serve a church in our CalPAC system at Centenary, one of our sister churches. We also know that he has been part of our families and our lives and our friendships these past 13 years here at Faith. And so in all these times, we know that this is a time of great transition. We know that in the middle of pandemic, this is not easy either. So I wanted to invite each of you into a time of sharing. If you have questions and love that you would like to share, you can come to our Zoom coffee and fellowship hour at noon today. If you have any questions about the system or the process, or even just to share your love. But know that this is not the end of our time with Pastor Key. This is just the announcement that is made. Because we have time to celebrate his ministries that he has served here at Faith. The many years and the relationships that he has taken with each of you in pastoral care and in ministry. And so as we do this, we want you to also know that we are finding ways to be in transition. And as the changes start to happen, Pastor Key will be working closely with our staff parish, as well as our staff and our ministries in making sure that this transition is smooth. But we know that our hearts are heavy today, but they're also ecstatic and elated that this is a wonderful thing for Pastor Key and his family. And so he will always know that he is part of this church family, no matter what or where he goes. So we wanna thank you for staying for this announcement and we're glad that this church family is what it is. It's a family of faith. And so we will never be broken by those bonds. God bless and may the peace of Christ be with you. Younger me, well, 
do I start? If I could tell you everything I've learned so far, then you could be one step ahead. And all the painful memories still running through my head. Wonder how much different things could be, dear younger me. Did you give some speech about how to get the most out of your life? Or I go deep to try to change the choices that we'll make Cause they're the choices that made me And even though I love this crazy life Sometimes I wish it was a smooth ride The younger me Beyond the cross, Lord, you're younger me. You are holy, you are righteous, you are one of the redeemed. Set apart a brand new heart for what you're free indeed. You are mountain, every valley, through the heartache you will see. Every moment brings you closer to what you meant to me. i 
It's a perfect love from a perfect father. 